Welcome to our podcast series, Talking with Traders, hosted by expert trader Garth McKenzie in London, from where he's interviewing various guests on the topic of trading. Welcome to season four of Talking with Traders with me, Garth McKenzie. It's been a lengthy hiatus since we completed season three of this series, so it's good to be back. Thank you to IG Markets for once again coming on board to fund and sponsor this podcast. Their involvement is hugely valuable, and we're proud to have such an award-winning CFD provider alongside us. In this season, I'll welcome back some of our most popular guests from previous seasons to get their updated views on the markets, and I'll also bring in some new guests too. I'll be asking them pertinent questions about how they trade the market and where they're seeing opportunities in the global trading and investing arena. The idea is that you, the listener, gain some valuable insight and education from these market professionals that may be of use in your own trading and investing. So with that in mind, let's get straight into this week's episode of Talking with Traders. This week's episode of Talking with Traders is with Mike Ledwich. Mike is a, a prop trader, trades at uh, Storm Trading in Cape Town. And um, it's a pleasure to speak to you, Mike. I've really been looking forward to doing this interview with you because to get access to uh, guys in prop desks and prop firms is not always easy. Not everybody wants to talk. Uh, so to have access to you and get your insight is going to be fantastic today. So welcome to Talking with Traders. Oh, Garth, wonderful to uh, to be invited. I feel quite honoured and uh, uh, quite uh, humbled to to have a chat uh, to you guys. Um, and uh, yeah, I love the the show, and uh, I've, I've you know I've listened to quite a lot of them, and you know, really good and inspiring stuff out there. So keep cool. it going. I'm, I think we really appreciate what you're doing. Oh, magic. Well, thanks. That's excellent feedback to get. I really do appreciate that. Thank you. So, Mike, let's get straight into it. Can you give us a little bit of background to yourself and uh, how you got involved in the markets and just your story sort of in, in a oh, few okay. short minutes? Well, yeah, I mean, uh, I I started, at, you know, I think uh, what's what's interesting about a lot of the guys who, who actually sit with, in our, with us here at Storm, I think our background is is in sport and uh, you know been having quite a competitive nature. So I, I started, um, you know, originally actually I, d- I did a business science at UCT, but it wasn't really my passion. Rugby was actually my passion, um, and I played a lot of rugby. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I I left um, uh, Bishops in uh, 2005, and I went to UCT and did a business science degree there. Um, and yeah, I got through the degree, but the focus is obviously more the rugby. And then I went subsequently after that to Pretoria. Um, and I always had a little bit of a side to me that was interested in, you know, um, sort of uh, financial markets. Um, but I think I didn't really, you know, have a proper handle on it. I think it was, I, I enjoyed actually understanding risk a bit more. So I, I used to uh, sports bet quite a bit. Um, and sort of through that, I found, um, you know, that there are other ways to, to make money <laughs> um, <laughs> and sort of found um, financial markets. So, yeah, I think in 20, it was 20, end of 2010, I sort of, um, you know, decided to look around and, you know, uh, uh, contrary to my, my, my mother's disbelief, I, 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 um, I found sort of a, a trading house um, and, you know, I think the the sort of regimented way, you know, going through business science in UCT was was to be a bit more conservative, um, and I decided not to do that. And I thought I'd, you know, take a chance on on the trading side to it. Um, I don't know. Back in 2011, that, that period of time, um, you know, SA market wasn't really that great, so it was quite a quite a challenging time to start trading. I mean, I think I looked around at me and I, I was in disbelief because no one was making money almost. Um, mm. So the volumes were low, uh, but I think I'm quite grateful that I actually did start at that time because, you know, I got to instill a few disciplines, um, you know, see thin markets, see markets that are quite, you know, tricky to navigate and sort of went from there. Um, and, you know, tw- so I, I would say by 2012, I started getting a bit of a grip on the markets um, and, and, and started uh, trading um, slowly, but surely trying to build up some confidence and get things going. Fantastic. What a story. And you're predominantly an equities trader, right? I trade predominantly equities. I do trade uh, also um, futures. I've, I've traded quite futures. I think futures um, 
predominantly more in the last six years. Uh, yeah. But prior to that, I mean, you know, sort of my bread and butter has been, uh, you know, uh, stocks and, uh, and, and equities yeah. uh, specifically. And, and, yeah. and may, mostly with a South African focus or do you also well, delve into well, the offshore generally, markets? So, I definitely, um, you know, have uh, been delving into to to U.S. markets. I think, um, you know, you've had to be able to 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 be able to move on to that due to you know liquidity and, you know, in the JSC, if it's doing under ten billion on a given day, it is difficult to you know you know grind out a win. Yeah. Um, and I think I, you know, I would say in terms of percentages, I would say I'm moving more from you know having an eighty percent you know JSC focus, probably more to like a sixty forty. Uh, and a 50-50 even more. I mean, you know, at the moment, it is all about, you know, finding where there is a game. Um, and, uh, you know, the, finding games in, in, in SA has been a little bit more challenging of late. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, very interesting. Yeah. And I mean, the style of trading that you do, you, are you a day trader or do you hold positions for a, a, a couple of days or weeks? What is the sort of style that, yeah. you, that you've uh, gravitated towards? So, Garth, I'm strictly, um, you know, a day trader, uh, scalper, intraday scalper, um, which is, you know, quite, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> there, there are not many of us left, I think, around. Um, so it's, it's, it's been a, you know, I find, you know, sort of patterns on a day and I will recognize big orders in the market. And, you know, those are sort of the ways I would, you know, um, uh, define myself. Um, I think, you um, Often on a day, we, you know, we, we are very driven by, you know, volume events or, or you know, sort of a, a trading statement or trading updates and sort of trade on those things and knowing which way, um, you know, where you want to be positioned in those. Right. So I'd say I'm, I'd, getting back to what you're saying, I'm just more of a, a, a day trading scalper. Okay. All right. Very interesting. And I mean, being in a prop firm, that's, it is the right kind of environment for that because I know that prop today, uh, prop firms like Storm, where you're at, um, offer very yeah. attractive, low cost ways of trading the markets. So if you're a scalper and you're looking to try and capture just a sm- few small uh, movements in the market, yeah. then doing it through a prop desk is, is, is a good way to do it. Um, yeah. But I've always wondered, I mean, I've never worked in a prop desk or in a prop firm myself. My career started out as a broker in the futures market, and then I broke away and I started to trade for myself from home. And I've often wondered whether it would have been useful for me to go and actually do some time in a prop firm, um, be around other traders and have that exposure to other traders. But I know these prop firms can have their advantages and, and their disadvantages. Um, and I was wondering if you could maybe just run us through some of those advantages and disadvantages. And also, what does a, a typical prop desk deal sort of look like? for a, 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 a trader wanting to get onto a prop desk? I think, okay, that's that's great. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I can get, elaborate quite extensively on this. I think prop firms, you know, you know, we've we've had we've dealt with quite a few, and we you know we try to create an environment, you know, that it is really conducive to to bring out the best in the individual. Mm-hmm. Um, I think prop firms can be hugely beneficial and hugely, uh, unfortunately, toxic. Um, um, you know, I think for me, what happens is if you've got the you know the, there's often a general you've got your bulls and your bears in the room. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and if you've got a dominant feature or dominant theme or, or, you know, you guys are all positioned on the wrong side, it can be quite an environment that is quite difficult to, you know, to sort of evolve and get, get better, um, you know, get better results out of. So I would say, um, you know, on the negative side, I think uh, you need to, you know, overcome those things. And, um, uh, you know, I think in terms of being, being able to get the best out of your traders uh, in the room, I think it's, it's important to have a decent balance. Um, and I think each, as I said, each trader is on their individual growth curve and journey. Um, so you, you end up finding that. But on the positive side, you know, you've got when you are and you've got a trade that you've got a high conviction on and you, you've got, um, you know, something that comes out quite quickly and quick to act. It's nice to have, you know, guys in the room to be able to you know, tap you on the shoulder and say, listen, uh, yeah, I think you're right. You know, and, and I think this is one you can maybe hold a little bit or a trade that you, you know, you feel like you, you can really get into it. Um, I certainly um, think it is beneficial. And I think, you, you know, over years you develop that mix and that brand of people and the, and the right, uh, you know, sort of uh, uh, characters in that room that, you know, sort of enable each other to get better. I think you often sometimes do see in heated situations that, you know, things can go the other way and people can almost be, uh, 
you know, if, not to, to try to throw machines out the window. So, <laughs> so obviously a very heated environment and you, you are, you're at the coal face, you know, yeah. at the end of the day. And, and, and I'm, I think um, what, what is, what is the, one of the trickier things about being in a trading is, you know, often you're the first to the kill. You know, a lot of the big banks that, you know, they haven't evaluated a trading update. They haven't right. seen that, you know, there's been a data point that's come out right. that adversely affects something. So you immediately at the kill um, before the orders are there and you're almost positioned. So, you know, it's, um, it's one of those things where it's, it's a very tricky thing also being on the day because often your day might, there might be just a big buy order in the market and it doesn't play out, which is, which is quite a, Quite a tough thing to deal with, especially if you are closing your positions out at the end of the day. Right. And, um, you know, you end up getting to suggest that like on the next day, maybe on Monday, you're wrong, but on Tuesday, Wednesday, it all plays out. Mm. Um, so quite, quite frustrating. Um, but you know, it's, um, it's, a, it's, it's a balance between, you know, finding, finding that and, and being able to, to risk manage accordingly to, to the day, uh, that's at bay. Yeah. Um, a typical, uh, you know, the, the hard works in, in terms of most prop firms. Um, you know, you pay after a desk fee to be able to sit there. Yeah. Um, and then you get, uh, you know, uh, your collateral margin account to, to trade off. And then you go accordingly to that. Um, I think most prop firms can sort of assess, you know, the sort of, um, you know, what, what level a trade is at. And, and, and when they're able to, you know, take on more risk and manage positions better. Um, yeah. It is quite a skill set and it is a lot of uh, mentoring and monitoring um, that has to take place in order to sort of uh, be able to like move to the next level. So I think a lot of the you know, guys put a timeline on, on sort of how long this actually takes. And it, it's, you know, obviously market conditions are important, but it's, um, you know, it takes a while for guys to, you know, sort of get to that level where, where you can actually be quite proficient at it. Okay. And, the, and, and you said a margin account. So the prop firm, actually, they so, effectively fund you. Do you have to put some of your correct. own capital up as well? Presumably? So, yeah. So you'll have to have a, a collateral account uh, with, with some of your own capital um, uh, put into it. And, and that obviously dictates, you know, sort of the, the size of your, your margin account in terms of being able to trade through that. All right, and they'll um, obviously give you the leverage, the ability to leverage accor- that. Accor- accordingly, yeah, yeah. So that, okay, that's all okay. All right, fascinating. I mean, it's well known that the the number of successful guys in trading generally, particularly when it comes to trading leveraged products, which is exactly what you're talking about now, um, the success rate is low. I mean, the statistics that I've always read is that it's anywhere between ninety to ninety five percent of guys who come along and try and trade leveraged products for themselves end up blowing up within a fairly short space of time. I, I would imagine you must have seen plenty of people come and go through the doors at Storm Trading as well on that uh, basis then. Unfortunately, I have. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, it's, um, it, you know, it's, it's just the nature of the beast, isn't it? Um, it is. You know, you, you're dealing with, yeah, I mean, there's high, there's a lot of emotions and you're dealing with the leveraged products. So, yeah, yeah. You know, you put the two into together. Yeah. Are there some with, common... Uh, yeah, are there some common mistakes that you've seen guys making that that the ones that don't make it? Um, yeah, I mean, I think you know you go through the whole thing about guys blowing up accounts, um, and it's you know that's part and parcel of of of, of the you know the new trade or the new guy to the game. But I think the common traits are, you know, I said to it a bit earlier is is being able to like identify uh, you know your growth curve and mm-hmm. to see where you're at. Um, and I think guys often you know rush in. I think particularly I think we've seen over the last two years. If you look on Twitter, I mean, uh, countless new traders. I'm not saying that that <laughs> you know good good on a lot of these chaps, but you know you, you really it is a period of time where you, you you need to be able to have seen a lot of a lot of examples and witnessed and felt a lot of pain actually yeah. uh, to be able to like deal with these, you know, you know, p- p- moves in the market and uh, be able to like have a rigid and, and strong enough uh, system and process to, to be able to get through. Mm. Um, some of the common mistakes that I would see, I would say, you know, obviously guys, um, you know, ending up in auctions, <laughs> um, yeah. you know, playing way too big, you know, having to try and hold positions overnight, even though, you know, okay. it's not in the, the, the rule book. Okay. Um, and, and, and just, uh, you know, I think getting quite on a day, <clears throat> you've got to realize that it, the key, I mean, I can, I can go run through a day with you a bit later, but I think mm-hmm. just identifying the day, I think a lot of people, guys think, as I said, when you first do the kill, they think it's got to happen now. The move's got to 
you know, first trend's got to break down now, or, you know, things are going to happen now. And often it doesn't play out as a day trader. You know, that's, that's unfortunate um, of how, you know, I think a lot of guys get blown up, uh, you know, expecting the immediate uh, gratification. Mm. Um, from a trade yeah yeah okay and you've you've mentioned these words you you um the first to, first to a kill you've said that a couple of yeah. times i like that um but you're also yeah. you're a trader who eats what you kill and that's <laughs> that's you know I, I have a lot of respect for guys like yourself who can do that because i've always thought no, that, that would be my aspiration as well at some point but i've always kind of said well I, it's nice to have uh, some sort of other risk-free income so I'm yeah. not entirely dependent on being a profitable trader because I know that this yeah. is a lumpy business. Sometimes you make money, sometimes yeah. you don't. And if you're okay. if you know if you're coming into trading expecting to earn a consistent monthly salary out of it, well, mm. you know, I've mm. unfortunately got bad news for you. And, and for someone, yeah, you know, so for somebody like yourself who is a trader that eats what you kill, you know, it's a lot of mm. pressure. Um, you yeah. know, I know you don't always, you're not making money every single day. Mm. How do you handle mm. that pressure? And, and how do you, I guess, sort of smooth your income out so that you can um, do what you do, knowing that there are going to be a couple of dry spells along the way? It's, um, yeah, Goth, I mean, it's, it's, it is, it's a, it's, 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 it's a, it's a, it's a one, it's a difficult one to balance. Um, and I think it's, you know, you, you've literally, you know, I would say there's more pockets of stress that you need to identify. So, you know, there's a lot of upside in terms of relaxation that you can get a, uh, from, from trading because you do get a bit more free time and time that you can actually, you know, utilize otherwise. But I'd say, you know, in terms of, you know, uh, taking the pressure off and, and being able to like, I think it's often I, I do uh, reset. Um, so I would, you know, be able to like sort of just really not trade at all for a while if I'm going through a bad patch. Mm. Um, and, you know, often, you know, just try and uh, keep your mind strong and, 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 and a lot of, you know, I think exercise is, is, is you know, it's between exercise and whiskey. Yeah, so <laughs> I try, I try, I try the, the, that, um, the exercise part. Um, but yeah, I think, I think it's, it's very important that you, you know, you, you are able to, to realize when you're not at your best. I use the analogy of, you know, um, you're going to go through, go back to the cricket nets, go back to the nets and play in the nets before you come out into the park, you know, rather yeah. get your eye back in, um, you know, uh, and, and unfortunately, you know, a lot of guys, you can't afford to do it. So, I mean, I agree with you hundred percent. It is a lumpy business indeed, mm -hmm. but um, you know, and you shouldn't be on the field because you're a professional athlete um, uh, trading and you need to be, you know, fit and, and ready to, you know, take on the opening bowler. It could be swinging it around like crazy. Yeah. You know, and you're swinging shots out there and, you know, you've got no chance. You need to know what the pitch is doing. You know, you need to know exactly where the, the ball is bowling from. And, you know, if there are wide balls that you can, you know, put those, those, those away. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, so I would say getting back to what I, you know, is identifying those days. And when you are in the, and you get, you are really stressed, you've got to step away and you've got to really go back to the nets for a bit. Yeah. yeah. I love the fact that you're using the cricket analogy, because I think that's something <laughs> I've kind of become known for over the years is saying, you know, use the, I use the cricket analogy yeah. a lot that you like a batsman yeah. at the crease and you've got to, you know, 100%. Yeah. Uh, so I like it. I can relate to that completely. Yeah. But so, something yeah. you also said there was that, you know, you've got to, you've got to go out knowing what the pitch looks like and what it's going to do yeah. so that kind of leads me to the next question which is mm. how do you do that how do you assess the pitch you know metaphorically speaking um so that you okay. go into the day prepared i mean what does an average day look like for you excellent question yeah so i mean i, I would say any prop guy or any guy who's you know trading intraday you know you've got to be on the pulse of um of the market so i you know i'm up at 4 30 i literally will almost know exactly where futures are uh, smp futures are all the time um i'll be checking prices when i as soon as i wake up um obviously i'll try to get a read from um from asia and you'll have a look at your commodities your you know main constituents and the jc with your bhp bulletin and and, and, and Rio and stuff like that and, and Tencent and, you know, get a gauge and a feel maybe to where we're looking to open. Um, obviously, IG markets will, will, will price sort of where our Aussie will be. So it gives you a really good uh, indication of where, where uh, the market will be. And then I'll look at the volume. I'll look on the, the day before and I'll come up with my best three ideas. Um, my best three ideas on the day, um, depending on whether I feel like the market will be bid or will be offered. Uh, looking at three stocks that I'd like to sell and 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 
or, or three stocks I'd like to buy. Mm-hmm. Um, and then look at the charts of them. You'll see if there's volume done on them. And then basically uh, 8.30, you will have, um, sorry, that'll be early on. And then I'll probably try to do a little bit of exercise. And then at 8.30 with futures open, watch where that opens to see if the market is bid or trading at a premium or discount. Um, and then nine o'clock kickoff. Um, and yeah, I think I think I often spend like the first 15 minutes, you know, sort of is like watching, you know, where if, you know, if you've got your local market bid, if you've got your retailers or if you've got your commodities quite bid and see sort of the theme on the day mm-hmm. to identify what theme, you know, is going on and where money's rotating in and out or just the whole market's bid. And from there, you can sort of get a picture of where you want to be fishing. Um, and I, I think it's really important that, you, you know, you want to be in a pool with a, a few fish and you'll often see one stock doing quite a lot of volume and you go, right, we can have a little play here. You know, we can, have, we can throw our rods in here and we'll see if we bite anything here. And then you'll see as the day establishes on either by 11 o'clock, you know, you just call it, uh, we'll go for have, have tea or we'll, you know, we'll carry on and we'll have, we'll reassess. And I'll try and like sort of do the afternoon morning session and the afternoon session. Um, separately, you know, because okay. they, they, they can be two different you know, things that can unfold. You can have data coming out, you know, um, 2.30, 3.30, and, um, you know, the whole game can sort of shift, momentum can shift. Yeah. So it's nice. I, I always, always think as a, a prop trader, it's, it's very important to have a square book because, it, you know, a square is a position or, or flat, flat book because it's always nice to just, you know, sort of have chips to play, you know, uh, right. which is – Especially if you, you know, um, it's it's okay not to put a trade on. You know, it's mm. it's okay. It's really a good thing, even though you pressurize behind the seat often to uh, to make some calls and to put things on. It's often really, really good to first assess and uh, uh, before you, you know, you go for it. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah. Uh, it's interesting. I mean, a lot of amateur traders that I I come across, you know, they don't realize that cash is a position. It's a choice. Massive. Uh, you don't have Massive. to be long and you don't have to be short, and you can actually just sit mm. and watch. And wait, uh, and often that's actually the best thing to do because, as you say, yeah. cash gives you options. So that when the, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, you've you've used lots of mixed metaphors, but I know hunting <laughs> has come up quite a lot in this in this conversation. So, so if yeah, I can, yeah. you know, use a metaphor, you want to have your gun loaded so that when the big elephant walks past, you know, you're aiming and shooting, and um, and, yeah. and 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 effectively yeah. cash gives you that uh, ability to be ready when the big trade comes along so that you can take Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I mean, uh, I think one of my colleagues used an analogy, you know, when, when, you know, when the sardine run comes, you, you don't want to be there with your rod, you know, you want to have the trawler out and mm. ready to flip and, you know, go for it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, <laughs> now, do you have any specific rules though when you trade? Like, uh, and it's kind of from yeah. listening to you. I'm not sure whether you do, but you can tell me. But uh, <laughs> you know, I'm a very technical trader. I have a couple of yeah. particular setups that I like to look for, and when I, those come along, I trade them. But from listening to you, it sounds like it's mm. you know there's there's definitely a methodology, but you're also kind of loose mm. in the way that you yeah. go about things. I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong there. You're listening to Talking With Traders, a podcast series brought to you by IG, a world-leading online trading and investment provider. If you haven't checked out the IG online trading platform, please do so and visit IG.com. Also, make sure you subscribe to the podcast series on your favorite podcast app or website by clicking on the subscribe button and you'll be notified weekly as we release new episodes. Um, Yeah, I think, you you know, the... uh, I am certainly, um, you know, I, I try to keep quite mentally agile. So um, I think it is important because things can just change on the, you know, so quickly on a day. Um, you know, you can, you need to be really, really quick to change your mind. I would say, I wouldn't say, I would say I like to use technicals as guidelines and it's important to, you know, that, 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 they, that they are in place because I think they're widely used now and I think a lot of the markets do move on them. So when levels are broken, um, you know, they, they usually are quite, uh, quite important to follow quite closely. Um, I think in terms of, you know, positioning and, and getting the right sizing on a day and getting things right, I think, you know, getting back to what I said, like it's hugely important just to identify the day. Um, I think, you know, often if some days, you know, a thousand first strand or a hundred first strand can feel massive, but on other days, 
you know, a hundred thousand first train can feel like a, you're not enough, not an, enough position. So right. it's quite a different, difficult things to gauge it. I think it's often been able to use your skill of seeing who's in the market and identifying, you know, there's a massive buyer there or there's a massive seller there and, you know, sort of being able to go with them. Mm-hmm. In terms of managing risk on that, I think that is, you know, from years and speed, you know, you're often very, you've got to be very quick. Uh, with these algos and things in the market, you need to know exactly that you you can change your position, you can get out of your position, and that is dictated often by volume. Mm. Um, so we try okay. to keep on that. It's 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 not a defined. Um, it's sort of the thing about uh, prop trading. You know, it's not a. It's not. It's very hard to you know risk manage or pr- 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 prioritize. You know which way um, you're going to go because. It changes all the time. Yeah. I can almost sit behind a screen and be like, geez, you know, what are you, you know, it's like as if you're playing PS5 or something like that. Because you just get into it and you just watch it, you know, sort of get into the game, you know. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah so this it sounds like there's sort of like a, a looseness, but it's, you're flexible, but you're mm-hmm. disciplined. And Curious. so, so yeah. I mean, you don't have a specific maximum tap out point where you, you know, I've lost um, X no, no, amount. Abs- abs- sorry, you absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, there will be fixed amounts that are, you know, I think what's important is to have your max loss on a day. So, so you know, you're right. So that's exactly what I'm affording to lose. And that's the exactly what I can do. So if you cannot make five grand, you cannot lose five grand. So that's okay. sort of my mantra. Right. You know, so you sort of, you set a nominal figure. You know, you said something nominal and you go, right, that is what I'm done for today. If I'm out of that, I'm off for the day. Cheers, we're off to play golf or we're going to do something else because it's, yeah. you know, it's not, that's, that's, that's where the discipline comes into it. And you've got to be massively disciplined on that thing. And, um, and, you know, that's what you've got to take into the next day. That's what you've got to understand is that the main thing about trading, uh, especially prop as always, to, to live, you know, you want to live another day. Of course. <laughs> you want yeah. to live to fight another day. Of course. Um, so, and, and I think if you, that's the mantra and I suppose the competitive side to it all. And that's, that's, I would say the sporting side or background that I had um, is sort of helped with that. Yeah, it's interesting. A lot of traders that I've interviewed over the years, um, they are they do come from sort of a sport background, or they or they're mm. quite proficient sportsmen mm. in one way or yeah. another. Um, just following on from what you were saying there now, though, about risk. I mean, the leverage. We talked about leverage and the fact that you, um, you, you know, your, the prop firm will give you leverage. Do you have a yeah. maximum sort of allowance? in terms of what you can take you you obviously put your own capital in but they yeah, then yeah. give you a, an extended yeah, an amount of amount. leverage that you can yeah, take yeah. so yes, what correct. does that look like so i i mean i wouldn't i, I wouldn't take a position i wouldn't say more than 50 times uh good uh you know that's already quite a big position um and i would say it's, it's hard to quantify um you know as i said like a lot of it is defined in terms of what's going on in the market because some days you said you can take these enormous positions and they don't even feel that big mm. because the market is is allowing you to. So I guess you just you're up to you know what's available out there. So I would say to give a ballpark, I mean I'd say a 30 30 kid uh, position would be quite a you know a decent chunk. That's chunky. Yeah. And that's obviously yeah. intraday because you go home flat. You know, and I must Correct, just yeah. make this very clear for the listeners because I know some people are going to hear <laughs> no. 30 times yeah. and their eyes are going to pop yeah. out of their head yeah. and say, goodness, yeah. that's a yeah. lot of leverage. Um, no, don't, is, you know, yeah. but yeah, so if you're a listener listening to this podcast, just understand Mike's done this for a long time and he's very experienced. <laughs> don't think it's a license for you to go and take 30 times leverage on your money. Absolutely please. not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. But now obviously but with it, that, yeah, yeah. with those types of, of exposure, leverage yeah. can go wrong. It can yeah. cut both ways. Uh, it can be very nice oh, for, you, when it goes, and, goes for yeah. you and it can ha- be hard. You know, it's like a knife, right? It's double edged sword. Yeah. Um, it can, Horrible, yeah. it can be great in the right hands. It can be very dangerous in the wrong hands. So yeah. are you at a position to disclose your best and worst trades in your career? Um, yeah, I think we can. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I think, um, yeah, I mean, if we, we can definitely do that. I think maybe we can start with uh, the best maybe mm. first and then yeah. we'll end with a, a bit of a worse one right. um I, I would say probably my actually it was in 2016 uh when uh, ab inbev bought sab yes um and it was actually i i actually wasn't i didn't play um sab per se i played the allsy 
Okay. Um, because it all the obviously is a massive. I mean, it was such a pity that SAP is gone now because it was such a wonderful stock to play with the Aussie because it was such a big constituent. Yeah. Um. So I actually on that day I managed to get a huge chunk of some Aussie contracts. Okay. Um. And 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 actually did really really well from those. Okay. Um. So that that's probably my my best one. My worst one actually was, I mean, this is probably for new traders out there. Uh, on my. I mean, it's not a probably a trade, but um, on my first, I think it was must be my first week of going live as a trader. Mm. Uh, I managed to, so we all have our margin accounts. I managed to put the price and volume in the wrong places for stock, for Xoro. Oh. Um, and the, the machine let it go through. So I executed on a 200,000 Rand account, a 3.8 million Rand position <laughs> short of Xoro and luckily enough the other guys in my trading floor actually picked up the other side um, okay. but it was really really bad but that so that was more of a mistake but I was saying like it, as a new trader coming out just yeah. just make sure you get those little things right um, uh, and I would say probably yeah my actually what was I got caught at the end of 2018 uh, with the Fed taper tantrum um, actually maybe similar to what potentially is playing out now currently in the markets um, is that uh, yeah, I don't think you remember just before Christmas the, the S&P was, was pretty much I mean it went I think it was down, flipping nearly 5-10% yeah. down yeah. and I was, I was caught long of um, some S&Ps actually okay. in that um, so that probably was, was one of my worst but luckily actually I um, actually was able to buy some some of them back, but I got stopped out properly and, and, and got got properly cleaned out from from using, as I said, excess leverage on uh, futures contracts. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, obviously, this game can be quite stressful and consuming, uh, and I think we've yeah. alluded to this already a little bit. But uh, you know, how do you unwind from a tough day? Let's say a day like that. You know, we've had a, a hard time. The S and P has given you a bloody nose. Um, yes. Yeah. yeah. What do you do? What do you do to come around and come back mentally tough the next day? She yes, sir. Um, well, there's this thing called whiskey. No, no. <laughs> just, uh, yeah. No. Um, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, after, after a really tough day, I think I, I, I really try to actually completely switch off and I will, um, you know, I'll often not try to come back immediately the next day and try, you know, swing for the rafters. I think it's important to, to get, you know, you know, coming back from a tough setback or, or something quite a big hit or, or a tough day, I think, you know, you really got to just sort of uh, emotionally take, you know, take guard of yourself and, and, and try to, you know, pull yourself um, out of that first um, and then try, you know, string some green days again together um, and, you know, try to get back on the, on, on, the, on the horse. I think um, a lot of these times you get, you know, you're going to get bucked off the hole and you're going to really struggle to get back on. Um, but I think it's important to be able to to take that the punch, roll with the punches and um, yeah I mean for me I think you know exercise is key I think uh, you know eating healthily is key and I think uh, keeping preserving your mind in this game is key because it's the only thing you've got really yeah um, I think that's it's, that's our point of it it's fascinating that you say that about exercising and eating well and that t- t- talks to the physiological side of being a trader. And what a lot of people mm. don't realize is that this is, it's effectively a high performance sport. Um, mm. And, and, and 100%. much like any other sport, yeah. you've got to be at your physical peak uh, to do it well. 100%. So people underestimate the importance of doing exercise, of eating a proper diet, uh, making yeah. sure you're correctly hydrated, yeah. that you don't come in with a hangover the next morning. Um, Absolutely. You know, and a lot of the trading books that I've been reading recently seem to be hammering mm. on this a lot more than what they what books I'd read in the past, which is good yeah. to see. Um, you know, there's yeah. like Jared Tendler has got a new book out, which talks about this and I'm busy reading mm-hmm. um, Steve Ward's oh. book as well. It's also fascinating talking about oh, all I'm the physiological. Sure yeah. It's, it's, I mean, there's some very good ones that have actually come out in the last two, three years. Um, and they talk a lot about this physiological side of, of trading and how p- keeping your body, you know, in a, good physical state is so important to success as a trader. Yeah, I have to agree. I mean, I think fitness, it's, it's key. You know, you are an athlete, you're a mental athlete. And I feel like you, you're just competing in it with your mind upstairs in, in, mm. in a trading floor or a trading room. You know, it's really, really important that you, 
take care of that site. That, um, and I think the results do show that, you know, you get uh, better with that. Yeah. Healthy body is a healthy mind. And it's, it's a cliche, That's but it's all. very true. It's very true. 100%. Yeah. Now I've mentioned books there. Um, have you got any two or three recommended books that you, that have really um, um, made a big I've, difference in I, your life? I think starting out, um, I was, you know, one good trade was one that we, um, we actually were lucky enough to have Michael Lafora in our office um, when I first started. And um, that's, that was just, it's a fantastic trade, you know, um, a book just to help, you know, guys get started and yeah. sort of uh, simplify a lot of the trading. Really, really good guy. Um, and then I, another good book was uh, Intermarket Analysis by uh, John J. Murphy, which sort of, you know, got, you know, sort of understanding the relationships between a lot of, um, you know, commodities and all sorts of parts of the market and how it all links up together. So Intermarket Analysis by John J. Murphy and One Good Trade are probably the two books that I would say um, you know, must, you know, must read, you know, okay. if you guys are looking to, to get in. All right. Yeah. In fact, One Good Trade is one that I've never read and I've, uh, but it's been mentioned many times. It's probably about time yeah, that, I, um, that I took it out. Yeah, I think you yeah, have a go. I think um, there's one or two chaps in our office that I mentioned in it. So um, it mm. obviously rings rings home for, for me. But um, yeah, definitely, definitely want you to, to have, a, have a look over some really good principles in it. Yeah, um, yeah. Which, I will check it out, yeah, actually. Yeah. I'll download it on cool. Audible. And last mm-hmm. question. Um, newbies starting out and wanting to get into this business and make a career of trading like what you've done. And what advice would you give to them? Sure. Um, just for, they must just make. Uh, just are, are you sure you want to do this? <laughs> um, it's um, no. Look, Garth. I think the key is. I think like most things, you've got to have a real passion. You've got to you know want to succeed. Uh, you you need to live it and breathe it. I think it's so important that the hours count. You know, uh, with this game, you've got to have time behind the screen. Um, so I'm saying, especially for the prop stuff. You know, you need to know exactly what's happening and tick for tick. It is important to put huge hours, there's huge hours behind the screen. And I think you need to expect it to take, you know, um, a long time. It doesn't, it doesn't, it certainly is not a quick money, a, a quick fix scheme. Um, mm. And I think it's very important that you can uh, show patience and, you know, ride it out. Um, and it's, yeah, it will take you to places that are very uncomfortable, but very rewarding. Um, yeah. So, I think uh, for any newbies starting out there, I think yeah, you've got to have a real passion for it, and um, you know, really love um, you know trading and 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 being part of a part of a team. Mm, awesome. Oh well, Mark. Cool. I've really enjoyed chatting to you. Thank you. Yeah, it's I've been it's, enjoyed it's it. been what just over half an hour, and I've actually loved every minute of it. It's like uh, <laughs> like having thanks. a conversation over a beer. It feels like. So <laughs> thanks, um, right. thanks for your insight. Thanks for coming on, talking with traders and sharing uh, your story with us. I've, I've really Absolutely. enjoyed it. Absolutely. Thanks so much for having me here, guys. Yeah, Brilliant. super. It'd be nice. We can catch up we'll again catch when, up you're, when you're when yeah. you're this side, when you're back in the UK at some stage. It'd be nice Absolutely. to catch up again. Cool. All right. Thank Thanks you so much for your time, mate. Thank right you. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Ciao. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us for today's episode of Talking With Traders, brought to you by IG, a world-leading CFD provider. We really are privileged to have such a leader in the field of online trading involved in this series. Please follow us on Facebook and engage with us there. And a reminder to make sure you subscribe to this series by clicking on the subscribe button on your favorite podcast app. If you've enjoyed this podcast, we'd also appreciate if you'd leave a review on the app too. Till next time.